Hello and welcome back to another episode of talking about small fiber neuropathy. Um, I just want to tell you some of what's go been going on with me. Um, my feet are in a bad place right now. I'm in a lot of pain today compared to other days. And um, that's just part of living with small fiber neuropathy. And I wanted to put a voice out there for people that might be searching for what's wrong with them. I know it took me visiting many, many doctors in many states um, and many areas of specialty before they were able to put together a picture of what was wrong. And most of the doctors had not ever heard of small fiber neuropathy. And I've even come across some doctors that uh, refused to believe in its existence. Small fiber neuropathy was not confirmed as a true entity until 2010. Uh, so it's only been about eight years now. It's still a fairly new condition. Um, and that's part of the reason why. Um, before 2010, people were told that the pain was all in their heads, which was unfortunate because obviously now we know that that is not the case and coming from someone that lives with it I have to tell you life can be downright difficult um, when you're in a lot of pain my feet are on fire all the time and uh, it's very unpleasant I cannot wear socks or shoes like I said in the last video uh, so even on cold days my feet can be freezing um, but burning at the same time so for those of you out there that may not know what you have, um, if you have burning pain that's unidentified, I highly encourage you to try to find a good neurologist, which those are few and far between, unfortunately, or to go to a, a higher institution of medicine like Mayo Clinic or Cleveland Clinic or Johns Hopkins University. Um, or Washington University in St. Louis uh, to, to try to get appropriate testing done, some autonomic testing done. Uh, but the, the telltale test is a skin punch biopsy. And some of those institutions like Mayo Clinic will send off a kit to a local doctor that can do the biopsy for you. Um, and then they ship the, the biopsy back to Mayo Clinic, for instance. And the lab there uh, looks at the nerve fiber density to see what's wrong. Or not what's wrong, but you know what the results could be. The density of the nerve fibers. Um, some people might suggest a sural nerve biopsy to you. But just to throw this out there, um, if they do take a piece of your sural nerve in your foot, you can be left with long-lasting um, numbness in that area. So... Personally, I would advise against that, but everyone can make their own decision in regards to that. I did want to talk about uh, the A delta and C fibers because I mentioned those also in the last video and I thought, well, some people that haven't researched the topic might not know exactly what those are. So I wanted to just read, um, read about those and give you some information. Uh, so I'm looking at my other screen over here. So that's why I look like I'm looking away from the camera. An A-delta fiber uh, is an afferent nerve fiber of a nociceptor. A-delta fibers carry cold, pressure, and some pain signals. Because A-delta fibers are thinly myelinated, they send impulses faster than unmyelinated C fibers, but more slowly than other more thickly myelinated group A nerve fibers. A-delta fibers are thin, 2 to 5 micrometers in diameter, myelinated axons with moderate conduction velocities, defined as the speed at which a nerve signal travels, 2 to 30 meters per second. Like other sensory neurons, the A-delta fiber is an extension of a pseudo-unipolar neuron, and that its axons diverge in two main branches after leaving the cell body with two distinct synapse targets, the periphery and the spinal cord. Um, so that's basically the definition of an A-delta nerve fiber. 
uh, the location, it says, the cell bodies of A-delta fibers are located in dorsal root ganglia and send axons to the periphery to innervate their target organs, as well as through the dorsal roots to enter the spinal cord. Within the spinal cord, the axons reach the dorsal horn and terminate at rex ed laminae 1 and 4, or sorry, 1 and 5, cross-sectional systematic layers within the gray matter of the spinal cord. A-delta fibers serve to receive and transmit information primarily relating to acute pain, described as sharp, immediate, and relatively short-lasting. This type of pain can result from several classifications of stimulants, temperature-induced, mechanical, and chemical. This can be part of a withdrawal reflex initiated by the A-delta fibers in the reflex arc of activating withdrawal responses. Um, that's a little bit about what A-delta fibers are. C fibers are unmyelinated, so I wanted to, to read about those briefly too. Um, the C fibers are unmyelinated and have a small diameter and low conduction velocity. They include postganglionic fibers in the autonomic nervous system and nerve fibers at the dorsal roots for fiber. These fibers carry sensory information. Damage or injury to nerve fibers causes neuropathic pain. Capsaicin activates C fiber vanillaoid receptors, giving chili peppers a hot sensation. Something that's interesting um, is that uh, they have capsaicin cream um, out there over the counter that you can get at Walgreens or CVS or Rite Aid or anywhere like that. But ironically, for my burning pain, the last thing that I wanted to do ever was to apply a cream that would result in more burning. But thankfully, when I did apply the capsaicin, um, it provided a degree of relief. I can't say that it eliminated the burning pain, but um, it did provide a degree of relief. So I encourage you that have unidentified burning pain, um, or what seems to be neuropathic pain, that even something like gabapentin or Lyrica may not help to try capsaicin, and to read more about the, the receptor involved. And I may end up doing a video on the receptor too, I just don't want these videos to get too technical. And I already feel like they've gotten somewhat technical, but I wanted to provide a definition of the A, Delta, and C fibers, so we knew what we were dealing with. C fibers are one class of nerve fibers found in the nerves of the somatic sensory system. They are afferent fibers conveying input signals from the periphery to the central nervous system. They are unmyelinated, unlike most other fibers in the nervous system. This lack of myelination is the cause of their slow conduction velocity, which is on the order of no more than 2 meters per second. C fibers are on average 0.2 to 1.5 micrometers in diameter. C, -fab fibers, C fiber axons are grouped together into what is known as REMAC bundles. These occur when an unmyelinated Schwann cell bundles the axons close together by surrounding them. The Schwann cell keeps them from touching each other by squeezing its cytoplasm between the axons. The condition of REMAC bundles varies with age. The number of C fiber axons in each REMAC bundle varies with location. For example, in a rat model, large bundles of greater than 20 axons are found exiting the L5 dorsal root ganglion, while smaller bundles of average three axons are found in distal nerve segments. Multiple neurons contribute axons to the REMAC bundle with an average ratio of about two axons contributed per bundle. The cross-sectional area of a REMAC bundle is proportional to the number of axons found inside it. Um, in experiments where nerve injury is caused, but nearby, nearby C fibers remain intact, increased spontaneous activity in the C fibers is observed. This phenomenon supports the theory that damaged nerve fibers may release factors that alter the function of neighboring undamaged fibers. Study of REMAC bundles has important implications in nerve regeneration after sustaining injury. Currently, recovery of distal C fiber function takes months and may still only regain incomplete function. This may result in abnormal sensory function or neuropathic pain. REMAC bundles are thought to release certain trophic factors that promote the regeneration of the damaged axons. 
and uh, this is the function of the C fibers, because of their higher conduction velocity, A delta fibers are responsible for the sensation of a quick shallow pain that is specific on one area termed as first pain. They respond to a weaker intensity of stimulus. C fibers respond to stimuli which have stronger intensities and are the ones to account for the slow but deeper and spread out over an unspecific area second pain. C fibers are considered polymodal because they can react to various stimuli. They react to stimuli that are thermal or mechanical or chemical in nature. C fibers respond to all kinds of physiological changes in the body. For example, they can respond to hypoxia, that's like um, lack of oxygen, hypoglycemia, that's low blood sugar, hypoosmolarity, the presence of muscle metabolic products, and even light or sensitive touch. C fiber receptors include C fiber nociceptors responsible for the second of burning pain. C fiber warming specific receptors responsible for warmth. Ultra slow histamine selective C fibers responsible for itch. Tactile C fibers sensual touch include CT fibers also known as C low threshold mechanoreceptors which are unmyelinated afferents found in human hairy skin and have a low mechanical threshold. They have moderate adaptation and may exhibit fatigue on repetitive stimulation and after discharges for several seconds after a stimulus. And C mechano and metabo receptors in muscles or joints responsible for muscle exercise burn and cramp. Um, so you can see that the C fibers uh, deal with a lot of different um, types of sensation. Now here we're going to talk about the vanilla oid receptor, which is also the same as the capsaicin receptor, just real briefly. VR-1 TRPV1 is a receptor that is found on the free nerve endings of both C and A delta fibers that responds to elevated levels of heat greater than 43 degrees Celsius and the chemical capsaicin. Capsaicin activates C fibers by opening a ligand gated ion channel and causing an action potential to occur. Because this receptor responds to both capsaicin and heat, chili peppers are sensed as hot. VR1 is also able to respond to extracellular acidification and can integrate simultaneous exposure to all three sensory stimuli. It's essential for inflammatory sensitization to noxious thermal stimuli. A second type of receptor, a vanillaoid-like receptor, TRPV2, VRL-1, has a higher threshold of activation regarding heat of about 52 degrees Celsius and also responds to capsaicin. Um, when open, these receptors allow for an influx of sodium and calcium, which initiates an action potential across the fibers. Both receptors are part of a larger family of receptors called transient receptor potential receptors. If damage to the heat transducer receptors occurs, the result can be chronic neuropathic pain caused by lowering the heat pain threshold for their phosphorylation. Um, so there you have it. C fibers and A delta nerve fibers and how they um, cause neuropathic pain in pretty technical detail. Uh, after this video, I'm not going to be as technical as what this one was, but I thought to lay it out there, it would be great to have a good foundation. Um, like I said, you should definitely try capsaicin if you have chronic neuropathic pain because it works on those receptors. And it's no um, coincidence that when I was talking about the vanilloid receptors and uh, when open the receptors allow for an influx of sodium and calcium, which in initiates an action potential across the fibers, well, we have to look at some of the medications that we with neuropathic pain take and think about that. Gabapentin is a calcium channel blocker. Um, things like Topamax or Topiramate, that's a sodium channel blocker. Um, so that's no coincidence that, that sodium and calcium ions are involved there. Um, some of those are the best treatments that we have right now for small fiber neuropathy, including some other various things like oh, amitriptyline ketamine creams and Pamelor and amitriptyline and carbamazepine and um, all of these other medications um, and I'll do a different video on that too I'm trying to think of what else I can say in this one. Oh, I wanted to mention um, the different conditions that can lead to small fiber or neuropathy that are known
So um, here are a few of them in no specific order. Um, let me see here, I'm trying to read on my screen. Here we go. This comes from the from an NIH website, National Institute of Health. Um, it says here that things like um, diabetes or other glucose dysregulation syndromes like impaired glucose intolerance and metabolic syndrome, thyroid dysfunction, um, sarcoidosis, vitamin B12 deficiency, HIV, neurotoxic medications, including many chemotherapeutic agents and antiretroviral agents, celiac disease, perineoplastic syndromes, and paraproteinemias. Um, and this, this particular article says, despite extensive diagnostic evaluation, up to 50% of individuals with small fiber neuropathy ultimately may be given a diagnosis of idiopathic, meaning the cause cannot be determined. Uh, depending on where you go, that number might be higher. Like um, at one place I went, I was told that as high as 90% of cases are idiopathic, which was really disheartening. Um, another place told me it's really important for me to find the cause so I can stop the spreading of small fiber neuropathy, but gave me no guidance in doing that. I have to tell you, I've read so much, so many articles about this. I also have a condition called erythromyalgia, which is secondary, they think, to the small fiber neuropathy, um, where my feet turn bright red, they flush bright red, and they, they feel even more intense burning, and sometimes like I'm getting stung by bees um, when they get hot. I'm unable to sleep with my feet under the blanket at nighttime. It's just, it's a different kind of lifestyle, is what it is. Um, Oh, Lyme disease is not mentioned in that article, but Lyme disease is definitely a potential cause of small fiber neuropathy. And in a future video, I'll also talk about um, the different perspectives of infectious disease, doctors, and allopathic medicine, traditional medicine, and Lyme literate medical doctors. And uh, I'm hoping that some people will chime in on that video, as there also needs to be awareness brought to that subject. Last topic before I sign off, uh, I wanted to mention that celiac disease is in the list and one thing that has helped me tremendously. Um, I don't have a celiac diagnosis, but um, a couple of years ago I started eating gluten-free and I also eliminated dairy from my diet for a long time and sugar. Um, and that tremendously helped. To this day, I do not eat gluten. I've added back in some dairy. Uh, but eating as clean as you can, from my own perspective, has added a tremendous amount of value to reducing my neuropathic pain level. Of course, I still have bad off days like today, but I thought, hey, why not record a video on a day when my feet are uh, intensely burning? Uh, to show you all that uh, you can still be productive despite the pain. Mind over matter, right? Mind over matter. Well, this is John signing off.